Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at chemical reactions in organisms, an introduction to enzymes, activation energy, active sites, and then we'll finish with a summary. So organisms carry out a whole range of different chemical reactions in order to maintain their survival. And these are done in different departments of the cell and different organelles. And we call these the metabolic reactions, and they're really important for survival. For example, in the plant's chloroplast, there's a whole range of different steps and reactions happening for the process of photosynthesis. In the mitochondria of both animals, plants, and lots of other cells, we're carrying out the process of respiration. So these are just to name two of the reactions in the body, which are made up of many, many steps involving lots of chemicals and lots of molecular processes. So the word metabolism is defined to refer to all of the reactions which happen in the body. So it's not just to do with digestion, it can do with respiration, how we see things, how we think, breathing in the lungs, all of the reactions that happen. And because we're so active and we're doing lots of things, they need to happen really, really fast so that organisms can respond to changes in our environment. For example, if an animal is being chased by a predator, we need reactions with adrenaline to be happening and we need respiration to be happening really, really fast. Otherwise, if it takes too long, we're going to get eaten. So this happens in response to lots of things in our environment, like the presence of food, or stress, or nerves, or anything like that. We have to respond very, very fast. Reactions can be sped up by some factors, for example, increasing the temperature. So if we were to measure a graph where we put rate of reaction on the y-axis, so the speed of the reaction, and we put the temperature along the x-axis, if you do increase the temperature of where a reaction happens, and the temperature of the molecules involved, you do get a higher rate of reaction. So you may think, well, why doesn't the body just live at about 100 degrees? Well, the reason for that is because high temperatures are very dangerous. They damage cells in two major ways. First of all, high temperature can melt lipids. And since our membranes are made out of lipids, it would destroy the cell entirely. Secondly, high temperatures denature proteins, which means that they lose their shape, they can't function properly, and therefore if they can't function properly, we can't do anything that we need to. We can't send nerve impulses, we can't carry out respiration, we can't do anything that we need to do. So we have to find another way to speed up reactions without causing damage to ourselves. And the way we do this is to use a catalyst. So a catalyst in science is defined as a chemical which speeds up the rate of a reaction, but it remains unchanged and reusable at the end of the reaction. So it's involved in the reaction, but it doesn't become changed and it can be used again as soon as one reaction is finished. It can go back and do another one. So a biological catalyst in our cells that we use are proteins known as enzymes. So what are enzymes? So enzymes are important molecules for carrying out all of our reactions. And any living organism has to carry out a range of metabolic reactions in order to stay alive. Respiration is just one of those examples. So metabolism is defined as all of the chemical reactions that happen in the body. That can refer to many things. Respiration. It could refer to digestion. It can talk about photosynthesis with plants. Lots and lots of different organs with different cells carrying out many, many reactions at once. In order to carry out these reactions fast enough so that we can survive, we have to use proteins, and these proteins are called enzymes. So they're a big family of proteins. And the enzymes are depicted as large proteins which are folded into a correct shape. And the way they work is they take our reactants and they turn them into products because on their own, these things won't happen fast enough. So the enzyme kind of helps it on its way and makes it happen faster. So any molecule which can bind to an enzyme and have a reaction catalyzed by the enzyme is called a substrate. So here we've got an enzyme, which is one of those large proteins. And if these two molecules can come into the enzyme and have their reaction sped up, otherwise known as being catalyzed, then these two are now known as substrates. It's a similar word to meaning reactant, but in this case, substrates bind to enzymes. The number of substrates an enzyme can catalyze in one minute is called the enzyme's turnover. So turnover usually refers to how fast something uses up something. So the higher the enzyme's turnover, the more substrates it can bind in a minute. If you imagine these are fitting in, being catalyzed in their reaction to their product, and then another set of substrates come in, because remember, enzymes are reusable. So the more it can do of this in a minute, then a higher turnover rate it has. So the substrates have to bind to a specific part of any enzyme they bind to, and it's the reactive part called the active site. And when you look at most enzyme diagrams, you'll see a slot shape where inside the protein, because remember this is a 3D shape and proteins fold up to 3D shapes. 
So somewhere in there will be a cleft or this kind of pocket. And this is where the substrates go. And the substrate fits in that area. And this area is called the active site. So here it's marked by this area. And you can see how the substrate will fit quite nicely into the active site. But a substrate only fits into an enzyme's active site if it's the correct shape. So remember, large molecules in the body have to have specific shapes, and it's really important for their function. Only the right shaped substrates will fit into their correct active sites. If you were to bring this substrate into this enzyme, it wouldn't fit, and vice versa. So this means that every single substrate, and therefore every single reaction, has its own specific enzyme to carry it out. So it's almost like an enzyme has one specific job, and it will only do that reaction on a particular substrate. So these substrates only bind this enzyme. These ones only bind to this enzyme. This one to this one. None of the others will bind to the other enzymes. And we call this complementary binding. So complementary refers to the idea that two things fit together really well, like this triangle in a V-slot. So complementary means two things fitting together. Notice that it's complementary, not complementary, which is when you're giving a complement to someone, which has nothing to do with this. So complementary binding is when two molecules fit together to complete each other. And so the enzyme and the substrate come together with complementary binding, and therefore they form a complex. And the ability of the enzyme to do this is affected by its 3D shape, and therefore the 3D shape of the active site. So remember, the enzyme is a protein, so it's made up of lots of amino acids. And the proteins have specific 3D shapes. And that 3D shape is coded for in our DNA. So it's all about shapes and fitting together, because this all dictates the function. If it's the right 3D shape, the correct substrate will come in, and it will fit perfectly into that enzyme. And then once this is formed, it can carry out the catalyzed reaction. So they must fit together. The shape of the active site isn't always going to stay the same. It can be changed by certain factors. And these factors include the pH of the environment, so remember, pH can range from being very high, i.e. alkaline, or it can be very low, where it's acidic. And the pH of the body is controlled very tightly by the cells to make sure that the active site is at the right pH for the right shape. It's also affected by temperature. And as we've said earlier on, if you increase temperature too far, it can denature proteins and they can lose their shape. Similarly, if you change the temperature downwards, it can change the active site too and also the presence of any molecules which we call inhibitors or cofactors. Inhibitors stop enzymes from working, whereas cofactors can bind to active sites and actually improve their function, make them better suited to fit that substrate. So when we're talking about how an enzyme works, we need to understand the term activation energy. So imagine a liquid where we have molecules floating around dissolved in that liquid. The molecules are always moving around and they collide with each other randomly. And every specific molecule has its own kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is kind of the energy of a moving thing. And this can occur in a gas as well. So every molecule has different amounts of kinetic energy. This one may have more than this one, for example, and so it whizzes around faster and with more energy. If the correct molecules, by chance, collide together, and if they have enough energy, then the chemical reaction can take place. So say in this case we're trying to get these two spheres to react and stick together. If these two come together and try to form a bond, but then they don't, then the reaction is unsuccessful. The reason for this is because the energy is too low, and therefore it's not enough to make them stick together. This could also be going backwards. The point is that any reaction needs enough energy. If they were to come together and they've got enough energy, then the bond will stick and the reaction takes place. So in this case, it's successful. And this is because the energy is sufficient. So for a reaction to occur, whatever's happening, if bonds are being made or broken, there has to be a suitable level of energy in the environment and in these molecules. And for every specific reaction, there's an amount of kinetic energy needed to start and force itself to finish. And we call this the activation energy. It's almost like if you imagine a roller coaster needs that push of energy to get over that hill so that the ride can then occur. If you don't push it hard enough, it won't make it. So you have to give it the right amount of energy for it to then progress through. So activation energy is the energy required to start a reaction, not to finish, but to begin the reaction. So if you give more molecules in a given container kinetic energy, then more of them will have enough energy to then react. So there'll be more successful collisions. So remember, these molecules are colliding with each other randomly, 
but if they don't have enough energy, they'll just bounce off and go their separate ways again. If you increase their kinetic energy, then more of them have enough energy to do this. So if these two were to collide, then they have enough energy for that reaction to occur and it will be successful. These two can collide, these two, etc. So there's more that have enough energy and therefore per second there'll be more successful collisions. Any reaction that has a lower activation energy will occur faster because it's easier to push a roller coaster over a shallow hill than a higher hill. So certain reactions activation energies depend on what chemicals are involved. Some reactions are very hard to carry out and some of them are very spontaneous. Those that are very spontaneous have a low activation energy and a tiny amount of energy to go over that hill and begin the reaction. And the reason for this is because at the start there will be more molecules that have enough of this energy to react. So lowering the activation energy is kind of the same effect as increasing the temperature because more of them have enough energy to get over that barrier whereas compared to the previous situation there were less of them. This change in energy that happens in a reaction can be shown on a graph as well. So if you had a graph where we had the progress of the reaction on the x-axis and then you had the energy here, we're talking about the energy of the reactants and products. So when we start here, we start at stage one just at the beginning. And what we have here is the energy of the reactants. So the chemicals that need to be coming together and reacting. The energy is at a certain level, but they need to increase their energy to get over this activation energy barrier. So this represents the activation energy. We have to add this much energy to these reactants to get them over that hill and then progress down into their products. So therefore down here at the bottom we have the energy of our products, which obviously still corresponds to the y-axis. So we need to put energy in for the reaction to happen and then the products are formed at the end. So how do the enzymes work? The enzymes are catalysts, so they make the reactions happen faster. And the way they do this is they lower the activation energy that's required for a reaction to start. So it makes it easier. So again, we've got energy here and progress. This was the original graph, the pink line, or no enzyme. And you can see that the activation energy is quite big. If we add an enzyme in, then the activation energy now only has to go from here to here. So there's a lower activation energy, and therefore more molecules in a given time will have the right amount of energy that when they collide, they can go through and make the products. So this is going to have more successful reactions per unit of time. So this is what enzymes do. They bring the activation energy down and make it more likely to happen. And so because of this catalysis that the enzymes create, it means that reactions can happen faster without having to increase the temperature and damaging our cells. So let's talk about the active sites of the enzymes because they're an important part of the reaction. The enzymes only catalyze a reaction if the substrate binds to the specific active site it's designed to go to. So here's the enzyme and we have a substrate here and we can see that it will only fit into this active site. And once it's bound, then the reaction occurs. They must interact for the reaction to start working. And most metabolic reactions aren't one single step. There's a lot of atoms and different bonds involved and lots of energies, so they actually occur in a series of steps. For example, if this is the original substrate we start with through each step to make the products, then there could be multiple things going on. There could be addition of water, there could be removal of electrons, there could be addition of positive ions, there can be changing in shapes. There's going to be lots of different steps to this. And so it doesn't often just happen on its own. It needs an enzyme to catalyze this. And the active site of the enzyme contains reactive molecules that can carry out all of these little steps in a controlled way and in the correct way, obviously overall with a lower activation energy than normal. So the active site, for example, which is this area, can have various chemical groups. It may have hydroxide groups, hydrogen groups, it could have positive ions, negative ions, electron donating molecules. The point is they all interact with the substrate in the right way to do the right reaction. If this substrate needs positive ions given to it, the active site can donate them. If this one needs hydrogen given to it, it can donate them. And it holds it in such a way that the activation energy is lower. And when the substrate binds to the active site, or substrates, it then gets held in a specific orientation and it facilitates this reaction happening. So the substrate comes in, binds to the active site, all of those chemical groups then hold the substrate in the best orientation that it possibly can. And because of this, it's kind of making everything as comfortable and easy as possible for the reaction. 
and this is why the activation energy is lowered because it's held in such an efficient way that it makes all the chemical groups want to react and do their job. If the substrate was just on its own, doing its reaction without the enzyme, it's got a lot more steps to go through and a lot more energy to overcome. And as well as this, the active site can actually physically put pressure on the substrate to further lower the activation energy. So it's not just the interaction of chemicals with the substrate, but actually the enzyme can squeeze the substrate in certain angles and certain ways to make the molecule more likely to turn into that product. Again, lowering the energy. So it's all about lowering activation energy and making it more likely to go over that hill. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.